its real differences with Islam. Now, when we look at the human rights uh, movement, its spirit, and the way it ultimately was expressed in human rights declaration, you find a few ideals which, uh, it's true, are not quite as uh, consistently accepted in the Islamic teachings as have been expressed in the Human Rights uh, Declaration. One of them is the role of women. Uh, Islam, the Quran, the Book of Islam is absolutely clear that men and women are all equal in the eyes of God, that both deserve to be respected, that both should enjoy uh, freedom of choice in the decisions that they take. However, while Islam has stipulated that women as well as men should be decently dressed, uh, women are expected to be dressed in a more formal way compared to men because of the peculiar uh, design of uh, their physiology. Uh, while this is one aspect of uh, the expectation of uh, Islam from them, there is another aspect and that has to do with the manner family is to be managed. The Quran gives the husband a status which is administratively a shade higher than the status of a wife. And this too is considered by the human rights uh, activists who are uh, strongly, passionately attached to its ideals as a violation of human rights. Now, in both cases, Islam is uh, pretty clear that uh, the uh, dress code has to be, uh, even if it's relaxed compared to some stringent views about it, it has to be uh, respected by both men and women. And in case of women, uh, there is an extra uh, level of expectation from them. So that is one real difference. The other difference that we find in the two ideologies is the attitude towards how crimes are to be dealt with. Islam has mentioned, the Quran has mentioned uh, hudud, punishments for certain crimes. There is uh, punishment, severe punishment for people who uh, create mischief on earth, who because of their evil designs, ways, are causing uh, the lives, the property and honor of uh, others to be uh, in danger at their mercy. Uh, the Quran has uh, proposed certain punishments which are severe. The Quran says that if a person kills another person uh, knowingly uh, by design, uh, then the murderer can be killed as well. So there is capital punishment for the killer, even though in some cases is. Uh, the, the deceased's family can forgive him. Now, the Quran mentions that if extramarital sex is uh, is done, takes place, and uh, there are witnesses who uh, confirm that it happened, and the judges uh, judges uh, satisfied that uh, there were no reasons for any relaxation to be given, then both men, both the man and the woman involved in the act are going to be lashed with hundred lashes. Now the Quran mentions that if somebody accuses the other of uh, adultery or fornication, uh, then the punishment is 80 lashes unless the allegation is accompanied by three more witnesses. That is, there are four witnesses to the crime. 
And finally, the Quran mentions that if a person commits theft, then if uh, the judge is satisfied that he had no uh, reasons that forced him to do it, there were no external pressures that made it made him uh, inclined towards the crime and uh, be excused, then the person should be deprived of his right hand. It has to be amputated. These punishments are also a bone of contention uh, between Islam, Muslims and those who are passionately uh, inclined towards uh, human rights uh, uh, to be followed and to be respected.